Have you ever thought about the reason why do we, humans, live? the basis for healing wounds and fighting off invading pathogens that cause sickness. Mitosis also allows old cells to be replaced by new ones, ensuring an army of fully functioning cells. Do you want to see how mitosis or the cell cycle works? Well, cells go through an ordered series of events. This series of events is called the cell cycle. In eukaryotic cells, the stages of the cell cycle are divided into two major phases. The first one, which is called interphase, is where the cell spends most of its time. Under this phase, the cells themselves are growing, replicating their DNA, and carrying out its daily cell functions. Cell division then initiates after the completion of interphase, the cells can divide and reproduce in two ways. It is through mitosis and meiosis. Both of these follows a strict sequential order which are as follows Propase, Metapase, Anapase, Telopase, then Cytokinesis follows. Though they undergo the same stages, they still differ in some ways. In mitosis, only one round of nuclear division occurs. During Propase in mitosis, the replicated pairs of chromosomes called the sister chromatids
mitosis plays a crucial role in a living organism's life. It is a process of replacement and regeneration of new cells. It is very important function in living organisms since mitosis help in the production of identical copies of cells and repairs the damaged tissues or replace the worn out cells. It continuously occurring in our bodies and it is crucial to fully function and stay alive. It also promotes growth since mitosis helps in increasing the number of cells in a living organism. Moreover, mitosis preserves and maintain the genetic stability of a particular population. It splits chromosomes during cell division and generates two new daughter cells that the chromosomes form from the parent chromosomes have the same exact copy of DNA. The daughter cells are now formed as genetically uniform and identical to the parent as well as to each other. For organisms that only reproduce asexually, mitosis is the key process that sustains populations of asexual organisms. Since mitosis produces genetically similar offspring, allows for some organisms to mean alternating life stages, asexual and sexual such as fungi. Still can't believe how mitosis is so important in our lives? Well, let me tell you something. Mitosis is important for the development and growth of different organisms, humans included. This is presented by comparing the statures of a 5-year-old and a 12-year-old human. The difference in height and appearance is due to the cell division of countless body cells inside them. That's why mitosis is also said to be important for humans to achieve maturity. Mitosis is again important because they are used in the replacement and regeneration of cells. This is the reason why mitosis is significant for the lives of several organisms such as humans, newts, and crustaceans. For our bodies, the human body, as we said earlier, Mitosis is integral for our automatic regeneration. This pertains to our ability of healing our wounds and scratches without us even noticing it. All of these immediate recovers are made by replacing damaged body cells with brand new cells in order to remove the injury and bring the affected body part back to its normal state. Next are newts. Newts are considered as the masters of regeneration. No other animal can match their regenerative abilities in body parts including the limbs, the tail and spinal cord, parts of the eye, the brain, the heart, and the jaws. Be reminded that all of these miracles are caused by mitosis happening within their body. Lastly, the crustaceans. Crustaceans are famous for their wound healing and limb regeneration. An example of this is a starfish replacing its lost arms and the hermit crab regrowing its missing legs or claws by using the process of mitosis. Third reason why mitosis is important is that it is used for asexual reproduction. Since mitosis is used in the production of genetically similar offsprings, its significance is clearly seen in budding processes and in binary fissions of certain organisms. Budding is the development of an organism from an outgrowth or bud. For example, our budding of hydras and yeasts, which are significant for their life propagation. Another similar case is the binary fissions of amoebas. Binary fission is a type of asexual reproduction where the parent cell divides, which results to two identical cells that have the potential to grow to the size of the original cell. This is crucial to the life of amoebas because this is how they reproduce and continue their existence. Now, do you believe us on how significant mitosis is? Well, should have been persuaded by now because we're moving on to our next chapter on why do life prosper. Meiosis For meiosis, it is the process by which sexually reproducing organisms generate gametes 
or sex cells as we know it, which is an essential precondition for the normal formation of the embryo. A sexually reproducing, diploid, multicellular eukaryotes, humans rely on meiosis to serve several important functions, including promoting genetic diversity and creating proper conditions for reproductive success. However, the primary function of meiosis is the reduction of diploidy, or the number of chromosomes, of the gametes from diploid, which is 2n or has two sets of 23 chromosomes, to haploid, which is 1n or one set of 23 chromosomes. While parts of meiosis are similar to mitotic processes, the two systems of cellular division produce distinctly different outcomes. Problems during meiosis can stop embryonic development and sometimes cause spontaneous miscarriages, genetic errors, and birth defects such as Down syndrome. Both males and females use meiosis to produce their gametes, although there are some key differences between the sexes at certain stages. In females, the process of meiosis is called oogenesis since it produces oocytes and ultimately yields mature alpha or eggs. The male counterpart is spermatogenesis, the production of sperm. While they occur at different times and different locations depending on the sex, both processes begin meiosis in essentially the same way. Unlike mitosis, meiosis undergoes two successive rounds of nuclear division. The first cell division in meiosis is called reduction division, in which homologous chromosomes are separated. During prophase 1, chromosomes condense and become visible inside the nucleus. Nuclear membrane dissolves, homologous chromosomes form by valence, and crossing overs occur. Next phase is metaphase 1. Spindle fibers from opposing centrosomes connect at the centromeres and align them along the middle of the cell. Anaphase 1 is the next phase. Spindle fibers contract and split the bivalent. Homologous chromosomes move to opposite poles of the cell. The last phase in this stage is telophase 1. Chromosomes decondense and cell divides to form two haploid daughter cells. The second division, also known as equational division, separates sister chromatids. During prophase 2, chromosomes condense and centrosomes move to opposite poles. Then on metaphase 2, spindle fibers from opposing centrosomes attach to chromosomes and align them along the cell equator. Next is anaphase 2. This is where spindle fibers contract and separate the sister chromatids, which is now called chromosomes, and move to the opposite poles. The last one is telophase 2. Then cytokinesis follows. The chromosomes now decondense, nuclear membrane reforms, and cell divide to form four haploid daughter cells. Ask me, why is meiosis important? Well, meiosis is responsible for the formation of sex cells or gametes that are responsible for sexual reproduction. It activates the genetic information for the development of sex cells and deactivates the sporophytic information. It maintains the constant number of chromosomes by having the same. This is important because the chromosome number doubles after fertilization. In this process, independent assortment of maternal and paternal chromosomes takes place. Thus, the chromosomes and the traits controlled by them are reshuffled. The genetic mutation occurs due to irregularities in cell division by meiosis. The mutations that are beneficial are carried on by natural selection. Crossing over produces a new combination of traits and variations. Let me give you some examples of meiosis being significantly important. It offers us some real-life examples and applications. Meiosis is essential to living organisms for several reasons. It allows diploid organisms to reproduce sexually, it promotes genetic diversity, and it aids in the repair of genetic defects. It allows diploid organisms to reproduce sexually. As previously stated, meiosis allows a diploid cell to be reduced to a haploid gamete, which can then recombine with another haploid gamete to form a diploid zygote or a fertilization. It enables genetic diversity. The crossing over or replication of genes that happens during meiosis rearranges the alleles present in each chromosome of a homologous pair, enabling the combining of paternal and maternal genes, both of which can be expressed in the resultant offspring.
This is the reason why we observe diversity among us. This allows for genetic diversity in a population, which acts as a buffer against genetic effects, disease susceptibility, and environmental changes. This is the reason why we observe diversity. Without recombination, population gene pools would stagnate and a single event would wipe out an entire population. The variation in the genetic composition of individuals within a population, species, assemblage, or community is referred to as genetic diversity. Genetic diversity reflects the similarities and differences in individual genes. Lastly, it aids in the repair of genetic defects. Meiosis-induced recombination can also aid in the repair of genetic defects in the next generation. If a genetic defect exists on one parent's allele, recombination can replace this allele with a healthy allele of the other parent, resulting in a healthy offspring. Given the importance of this process, we can deduce that genetic diversity, genetic mutations, and fertilization on the dish are made possible through sexual reproduction can be regarded as real-life applications of meiosis. From the results that we had from our previous performances, this time, it felt more challenging for us. As we completed making the third project-based learning, we have further acquired a deeper knowledge regarding the significance of both mitosis and meiosis. We have determined that our mind, skills, time, and effort were put to the test in creating such outputs from these past few projects. To acknowledge the fact that this activity didn't just ask us to make a mere simple video presentation, but also give us a lot of various outcomes. Not only that, but we have also gained brand new insights that have sharpened our abilities in certain areas. Truly, it was an exhilarating experience. Cooperating and giving our own very best in finishing certain parts of the project have given us a very satisfying end result. We will eagerly wait for the next PVL activity that will, again, let our talents and knowledge shine through it. Thank you for listening to our video presentation during this third and last PVL. See you again next time. Bye!